lot of people watching my channel are preparedness minded type people. Uh -huh. A lot of them won't be into primitive skills. Sure. I think if yeah. I've got a good grasp on who watches my videos. With that said, why do you think it's important to keep practicing these skills and maintain these these this forgotten knowledge? Yeah, you know what I mean? Absolutely. What yeah. I get asked that question fairly frequently and um, I feel like I've come to a place that works for like my philosophy and like working on you know hand drill fires and flint napping and building primitive shelters and stuff because necessarily because I feel like I or someone that I'm teaching that that's gonna save their life in some epic survival situation yeah. one day. If you're flint napping to save your life right you've messed it's, up yeah <laughs> you messed you up missed, real bad. <laughs> you missed several steps along the way. Yeah. But for, for me and I, and I think a lot of the people that come to the classes and stuff that I teach it's about connection and appreciation yeah. uh, for the landscape around us, you know, and for the people that we're with, mm -hmm. you know. And so I, I say this all the time, but if you, you know, for the like, primitive fire classes that I teach, um, if you come and, you know, you learn how to take a piece of yellow ironweed and, and rub it on a hearthboard and create an ember with that, yeah, that's cool from a survival situation, but the appreciation that you have for that campfire and for everyone else that's that's gathered around that fire is much, much deeper than if I take a lighter out of my pocket and start a campfire. Nothing in the world wrong with having a lighter. In fact, you should. It's you smart. You should 100% right? have a lighter. Right? Yeah. And you not only a lighter, but you should also have a ferro rod, yeah. right? I mean, I got one on my wrist right here uh, Back that, yeah. I'm, that I'm wearing all the time. Yeah. Um, but it's about the the connection and the, the knowledge that the forest can provide for you, right? Mm -hmm. And about how all of those things connect themselves to one another. And it, it's, it's great to, you know, be able to sort of, to do that to impress people if that's kind of what your thing is but for me there's not many people possess that skill which yeah, is a I thing mean, yeah i mean more and more people nowadays just yeah. because i mean there are people sharing a lot of skills on social media and stuff like that so i think honestly right now there's probably more people on the earth that know how to do a hand drill than maybe ever in existence because our population is so much that's bigger true. than it was when native people it were doing be. these techniques yeah. which is kind of crazy to think about uh. right um, but at the same time, I think that, you know, I mean, I sell technical outdoor equipment for a living, so I'm in no way against you're, you're using gear this guy. stuff. I'm yeah. a gear guy, 100%. That's what I do. Uh, my shop is called the Pack Rat. It's in uh, Arkansas, and we sell technical outdoor equipment. Yeah, if, I have, if I have questions about gear, you're the guy that I reach out to about gear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but, it, you know, it's the kind of thing that, um, that stuff's great, but... Gear is one thing and like knowledge and understanding of the resources that the landscape can provide is something completely different. Those things are not mutually exclusive. You don't have to choose. I think that's one of the things that I, or it's a conversation I frequently have with people that it's like, you don't have to be one or the other. Mm -hmm. You know, it's great to be prepared. It's great to have modern tools that are lightweight and reliable and durable and all this type of stuff. But if you only do that, it's like you're all, you're putting all your eggs in that basket, right? Yeah. And so there's not only this like mental component of the understanding of what resources that you can utilize, you know, from the forest and landscape and that type of stuff, but there's also this like greater appreciation um, for that I want to continue to behave and conduct myself in such a way that the forest continues to be there and be healthy yeah. so that I have these cool places that I can go and so that these resources continue to be there for me, my kids, my grandkids, and so on. Mm -hmm. And if we don't ever think about that, then, you know, we're, we're, in my opinion anyway, that we're really not behaving in such a way that's like a responsible, like, I don't know if you want to call it, but like, literally like a, a, a citizen of this planet so mm -hmm. to speak right like um, it's important to you know know how to look after yourself know how to look after your family your friends and all that type of stuff but the only solution isn't always a piece of gear sure a lot of times it's up here and it's what is naturally there yeah in the environment. I, I found that learning the primitive skills gives me a lot more confidence yeah oh yeah so it's you know I walk into a wild place yeah. right there if you put me out there I know that given enough time, yeah. and as long as it's not pouring rain, right, right, as long as conditions, conditions are yeah, conditions conducive specific, to it, yeah. I could probably get a fire right. going. And I, I, and that's not to brag or to boast. It's just I, I'm, I'm very confident that right. I could probably make that happen. Because you, you know? put the work in. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. To learn how to do it. So I carry myself probably a little bit differently than I would if I didn't have that. Yep. You know what I mean? And I'm not worried about it. Like like packing for trips and stuff. Yeah. I, honestly, one of the biggest things that I got out of what we did was I don't stress about packing for trips. I sure you don't worry if you have every single little thing because right? it doesn't freaking matter. Yeah. Like like yeah, I'm yeah. not gonna die no matter what. Yeah. Like if I forget whatever right it doesn't matter so yeah. when i pack now it's just like i kind of go through a checklist in my yeah. head i kind of know what i want and yep. like i just throw it in there but then i don't stress about it because it's yeah you don't need it yeah no, no. one's gonna die yeah it's, yeah it's gonna be okay <laughs> yeah, yeah everyone's gonna be that. okay 100%. Yeah. and the other thing that i would add to that is like you know when you're first starting out there are certain things that you need to be comfortable and to be able to look after yourself but as your experience grows and gets better like it's not a bad idea to kind of revert and leave something out every once in a uh -huh. while, right? And so, because if you're just like, oh, I'm like super skilled with a ferro rod, awesome. Then that that's a skill that anyone that spends any time in the outdoors should have in their back pocket. But after a while, like, leave that ferro rod behind and try figure to figure it out. it out without it, right? And that type of thing. Whether that's like a old school flint and steel or friction fire or, you know. Whatever. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's tons of options. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, just experimenting with things and uh, keeping yourself, uh, you know, adaptable, versatile, that type of stuff, I think is really important.